During the coronavirus outbreak, I started making DIY face masks using some of the patterns I found online, but I really didn't like the fit, especially because I was used to more form-fitting and comfortable masks used for carpentry and demolition. So I designed what I'm calling the best fit face mask. It's more form-fitted onto the face and it has adjustable elastic ties around the ears to fit a wider variety of faces. Now let's get busy making the best fit face mask and be sure to share this tutorial with friends and family so we can kick coronavirus's butt. During this time, the safest thing to do is for you to stay home. For that reason, I've compiled this list of fabrics you may have in your home that will work beautifully for your best fit face mask. Inside really good fitting face masks is usually um, some type of flat wire and I've experimented with a couple of different materials to see what would work best. Um, first I used twisty ties doubled up. It worked okay but not as firm as I would like on the bridge of my nose. This is the tie on a coffee bag um, and I actually can get two nose clips out of one coffee bag. I just pulled it off and cut it and then bend it in shape over my nose. Well, it doesn't stay on until it's in the mask. But anyway, I found this worked the best. But if you don't have coffee bags or you need more nose clips, I offer a close second to the coffee ties. Cut a piece of electrical tape to three inches, then cut two pieces of 18 gauge craft wire or paper clips to two and a half inches. Lay them on half the tape and fold over the tape to seal it to itself. Then trim off the excess tape, making sure to leave some tape on the ends to cover the wire. I know one of the other materials that are hard to find is elastic, so here are a few acceptable alternatives. I purchased 1 8 inch round shock cord or paracord in bulk. Cut two pieces of paracord 12 inches long. If you can't find paracord, you can cut t-shirts into 1 8 strips, then stretch them out to 12 to 13 inches. Finally, if you can get your hands on the flat no-pull hair ribbons, you can untie them and use one for each ear. The key to the best fit face mask fitting so well is the adjustable straps. Using a craft bead on the straps will allow the user to adjust the mask to their face. The paracord is the hardest to thread, but I use pointed tweezers to poke the straps through. Be sure to tie the ends of your straps to prevent the bead from coming off. If you don't have craft beads, a button with some craft twine can work well as a strap adjuster. Finally, a jump ring can work too, but it's a bit harder to adjust. Download and print out the templates. Make sure to print an actual size and check the size with the one inch box on the template. Links for the templates are in the description below or on my blog. Gently score and fold the two corners on the template. Trace the outside face mask template on your fabric. I designed the template so you can get maximum use out of your fabric when making multiple masks. It helps to fold over the fabric and cut with the long sides of the template on the fold, but you can rotate the template to fit more cuts out of the fabric. You'll just have to seam together the pieces on the long side. Now lay your inside liner template on your liner material. If you're making a filter pocket, you'll need two liners, but only one outside piece. If you need to connect the two pieces of fabric together on the long side, do that now, making sure the right sides are together. Fold the corners of your template and mark a line onto your fabric. Repeat this on all pieces you have cut out. Stitch along all the marked corners. If your fabric is printed, be sure your right sides are together. Now trim off the excess material at the corners, making sure to cut closely to the stitching. Turn your outside mask material right sides out and press it with the iron. Now lay the liner on top of the mask, making sure that the angled corners match for the nose and chin. Insert the liner fabric into the outside material and align the points and angles. Then center the liner so there is an equal border of outside material around it. Open up the mask to the center. Fold over the outside material once to touch the edge of the liner. Press and then fold over the material a second time, this time over the liner. Continue pressing around the entire mask. This next step is only for those wanting to add a filter pocket. Just know that the more fabric you add, the harder the mask is to breathe through. Fold over half an inch of the material twice at the ends of the second liner. Press it with the iron. Now stitch over both sides along this edge to tack the fold over in place. 
After stitching, insert the filter pocket on top of the liner, matching all the corner points. Then tuck it under the pre-ironed edges. If you need to, iron the edges again. Locate the nose portion of the mask. Remember, this is where you'll be inserting the nose clip. Flatten the nose clip and tuck it under the iron edge of the nose area. I inserted the pin to hold the clip in place, but be careful not to put the pin all the way through the outside fabric layer so as not to add any large holes in the mask. Stitch along the edge of the fold, being careful to avoid stitching onto the nose clip. Rotate the mask and stitch along the chin side of the mask. Now flip the mask over and feel for the nose clip. Sew a few stitches to the left and right of the nose clip to keep it from sliding around in the mask. Double fold the ends of your mask. Be sure to avoid the filter liner if you have one. Time to grab those straps you made earlier. Take one strap and tuck it under the fold on the end. Stitch along the edge of the fold, taking care not to stitch over the elastic. Repeat for the other side. Make sure your elastic straps still move freely in the fold. This allows the mask to cinch behind your cheek and not pucker. This concludes your tutorial to make the best fit face mask. If you end up making these to sell or donate, please send me an email so I can add you to the database and please share this video with a friend or two or three. And most importantly, please stay safe out there. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to click that like button below if you liked it. And hey, don't forget to click that subscribe button up there and you'll never miss another DIY video tutorial from Pretty Handy Girl again. Speaking of not missing anything, I'm on all these social channels. Come find me at Pretty Handy Girl.